These are the best Blessing Stone combinations in the game. Let's talk about it. What's good, YouTube? Nugget here. Come with you today with a Blessing Stone combination video. So, guys, we're talking the best Blessing Stone combinations in the game. And we're in the Codex because we're going to talk about it at the Heroic, Rare, and Legendary tier because I could come up straight and say, hey, Double Edged Sword is the best Blessing Stone in the game. Well, that may be true for the Legendary variant, which gives you up to 12% attack boost. But at the Rare variant, this is only giving you about an 8% attack boost. So we're going to talk each category. We're going to talk Rare, Heroic, and Legendary. There might be timestamps. So if you guys want, you can skip ahead. And we're going to talk combinations. But before you get into that, make sure you guys leave a like on the video. It really helps the channel out if you subscribe to the channel as well. Turn on post notice so you don't miss a live or an upload. But starting off, let's talk Rare. If you have each and every Blessing Stone in the game currently at the rare variant the best combinations will depend on if your boss has one a break gauge or not and two if you're doing mob clear so let's talk real real quick if you're doing obviously blessing stones are pertaining to just sunji news so definitely if let's say you're doing a boss battle right let's say maybe you're doing a bar and boss battle or a workshop of brilliant light mode where you need sunji new those are usually just one-on-one -on -one, so you can honestly solo but all those bosses will have a break gauge so off the bat you can kind of predict what i'm gonna say but pulverize 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 is one of the best blessing stones in the game and honestly this transcends even rare at heroic and legendary it just gets better but it starts getting good at the rare tier but hey I want to I want to say you definitely want to be using pulverize anytime your boss has a break gauge you can't go wrong with things like bloodlust even at the rare tier this is a pretty good skill because it will decrease your attackers attack by four percent when you get hit and then when you attack your target it's going to decrease their defense by four percent again at the rare tier it's not much but it is something to start with if we keep on going here there are a few more blessing stones at the rare tier that I really really say you should combo up with we're talking mono rampage I can't lie, at the rare tier, an increase of 6% to my attack, but a mana consumption of 6% isn't bad, especially at the rare tier, because with cores now, you can get additional mana, so really, you combat it with getting a bunch of mana cores, you put on mana rampage at the rare tier, and you get a boost that's literally equal to blades at max percent, so blades at elite knight gives you 6%, now mind you, it's 100 to extract the shadow, and then it is 600 to freaking promote them all the way to elite knight so you just saved yourself 700 traces by equipping mana rampage but hey if you combo it up you can get 12 percent by using both so that might be a good combination right there if you are a little bit low on attack now let's go back to the rares there's honestly not too many crazy rare blessing stones that i will vouch for i'll say sharp perception definitely i'm not vouching for that reawakening you can go terrible with reawakening honestly Chains of Blood. I think Chains of Blood at rare is pretty decent. I would say it kind of gets chaotic because uh, after you get it on heroic and even legendary, I really can't be bothered to use this because you can't get hit too many times or you will get that attack damage increase, but damn, you're going to get some also uh, some nasty damage taken. OK, but I think I want to say that is it for the rare tier i think we are one and it's just giving you five percent again well let's say for guild boss let's say power destruction if you're running three elemental teams you can never go wrong with we are one so definitely keep that in mind but again we're talking for boss battles now if we're talking for just waves and waves of waves of mobs wolf assassin for sure maybe let's say conqueror reversity if you're getting hit from just every angle you're taking damage if you want survivability you can go dash or swiftness definitely swiftness at any any blessing stones here is always a good one because you get an additional dash for one and then there's always a chance when you use your dash that your cooldown will reset so you'll get another dash so cool 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 i can't forget about weakness detection i definitely forgot about that one that is my bad hp extraction did get buffed a little bit so if you're doing a lot of mob clears you can definitely do that and then i kind of forgot about this one but boss slayer at rare it's not that terrible because i kind of remember boss slayer being hectic at the heroic and legendary tier but at rare honestly the dash cooldown increasing by 15 percent isn't terrible if you know how to manage your dashes your boy no goody man doesn't but hey it's in the name so you know there's no shame in it okay <laughs> let's go ahead and move on to the heroic tier though now when it comes to the heroic tier definitely 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 we already said it pulverize 
it just gets better it gets better and better and better it's not going to stop getting better okay a weakness detection let's talk about this you're getting a four percent increase there so definitely you can combo that up let's say double edged sword if you have that now this is doing up to 12 percent like come on guys three percent stacks up to four times you're gonna get a 12 percent attack boost increase and then i think i said legendary you were getting 12 percent, but it looks like at legendary you're getting 16 percent. so that's super super cool for the double-edged sword at the legendary variant but let's not get too ahead of ourselves boss slayer on heroic again this is where i said it gets a little bit hectic because a 20 percent increase to your dash cooldown is crazy 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 i personally like bloodlust at the heroic tier as well you can't go wrong there some other legendary or heroic favorites sharp perception i like sharp perception at the heroic and above tier again sharp perception at rare for comparison this one gives you literally four percent max crit rate increase but at heroic that over doubles you get 10 percent here so i think i have it i don't even have it on legendary yeah so i've been rocking with sharp perception and we use that mainly for proof of strong to get those extra extra crits for that b set so if you guys are proof of strong demons you definitely should be using uh, sharp perception if you are a little bit in that red a little bit underpowered reawakening also on heroic you can't go wrong with it i personally couldn't wait till i get reawakening on heroic and we recently got it maybe a week ago after playing the game for about six months can't wait to see it at the legendary variant but you guys already know reawakening at heroic and above is super super cool but at the rare variant it's also cool but hey that that almost almost doubles right four percent attack bonus or four percent bonus in general bloodless you can't go wrong there pulverize you also cannot go wrong there mana rampage this one gets a little bit more insane we're talking nine percent now but the skill mana consumption will also increase by 12 percent again guys this is super super cool and then advanced dagger i didn't talk about this at the rare tier but heroic and above i personally like it we're talking a damage increase of 8.4 percent anytime you're enemy is below 70 percent and that's a permanent increase and then i recently got this on legendary but i'm gonna save that when we get to the legendary tier and as a matter of fact we might as well go the way up to the legendary tier don't forget about we are one this is also very broken at the heroic tier as well and then i also like assassin's prophecy on heroic at minimum okay 11 percent back damage we didn't talk about it at rare because i don't really like it at rare now as far as legendaries you see i have some you see i don't have some but that's not going to stop my bias because i still know some of the best blessing stones in the game so let's go ahead and honestly we can tackle this line by line we are one again very very good for your boss battles or your team battles power destruction maybe guild boss if you're running three supports you can't go wrong by giving everybody in that team a 10 percent bonus to attack defense and hp so definitely combo it up i think we are one is actually going to be a very very good blessing stone in the future once we get more support solidify teams right but let's keep on going assassin's prophecy this is insane because <laughs> senji new always shadow step so the second you get a shadow step and you defend uh, you defense decrease your opponent by 60 percent now you get an increased back damage of 16 percent so it's like it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy i will say swift strike depending on how you use it I know I didn't talk about it at Heroic or Rare, but Swift Strike, when you use Extreme Evasion, it successfully your damage increases by 16% for five seconds. This is like quick, quick, quick burst. So I'm not a personal fan of Swift Strike. I think the seconds needs to be increased maybe a tad bit, like maybe seven seconds, but hey, if you guys have it at the Legendary tier, 60% is pretty cool. So <laughs> definitely be able to utilize that. What we wanna say, weakness detection. Oh my goodness, just look at that. I'm almost salivating at the mouth but look 20 percent elemental weakness increase is just crazy 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 hp extraction for those large mob clears you definitely want to be utilizing that if we're talking swiftness at legendary broken broken 30 percent chance every time i use a dash i'm gonna get one back is just insane guys and then we talked about double edged sword a 16 percent attack bonus is just lovely holy 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 now boss slayer probably wouldn't do it <laughs> probably wouldn't do it again you're getting that damage dealt to bosses by 20 percent, but your cooldown of your dash is increasing by 20 percent. i don't know if, if you had let's say your first legendary is boss slayer you might just have to tough it out if your first legendary is chain of blood you might have to tough this out as well but i won't lie at legendary this one doesn't look bad because i remember chains of blood got really adjusted recently so your attack damage increases 30 percent equal to your hp loss ratio but your damage taken also increases by 10 percent. so that is super super cool you can never go wrong with something like that 
Conqueror of Adversity. I like this one as well because H every time you're losing a significant amount of HP, your attack defense and HP will increase by 5%. And this will stack up to 15%. So you get a mid-game buff of a 15% attack bonus, defense, HP bonus. It's pretty cool for Sunjinu. I can't lie. And then that's going to be permanent. There, you don't see any cooldowns there. Again, Wolf Assassin for the mob clears. Pulverize is probably the number one blessing stone in the game when your boss has a break gauge. Okay. So, or when your boss has a break state, because some bosses have like QT break gauges. Some bosses have the just regular break state. Let's say like the dragon and power destruction. You break both hands. He goes into break state, but he doesn't have a break gauge necessarily, but you can can still take pulverize there as well so definitely pulverize you can get so much value out of this even when a boss doesn't have a break gauge like we just talked about if we're talking let's say camouflage for survivability this one's not bad i can't lie bloodlust i am so ready to get this one at the legendary variant man this is going to be so crazy when we can get this legendary i cannot lie a 12 percent defense decrease stacking with the shadow step defense decrease stacking with let's say a choi joni defense decrease let's say a libora charm i'm just talking about guild boss right now but hey guys a few more to talk about sharp perception this one at legendary is super super insane and nice we're talking a 18 percent critical hit rate increase i can't lie that is super sweet there is no other buff that gets you 18 percent. so if you are lucky enough to have this at legendary count yourself a lucky one go ahead and pat yourself on the back and like the video while you're at it too because hey i commend you my guy and then reawakening oh my goodness i didn't even know it's 20 percent at freaking legendary but dude i need this i need this guys i know i just got reawakening on heroic but i need that i need that i need that i need that mono rampage again not bad for that tier and then the last one i would really talk about is advanced dagger techniques now this one i currently have this one and this is what's been getting me a majority of my proof of strong trophies right so anytime your enemy is below 70 percent hp the damage increases by 14 percent. that's permanent over the rest of the battle as long as they are under 70 percent super super broken super nice and dandy but what's the best combinations well currently on screen you kind of see one of my combinations that we are one needs to be taken out if a boss has a break gauge this is what i'm rocking reawakening a double-edged sword pulverized advanced dagger techniques right this this can be taken almost anywhere right i could take this to battle for the trials i could take this to power destruction i could take this relatively anywhere i want to say this is almost a universal setup but it's pulverize is kind of getting in the way with that so let's say i take like weakness detection here now this is for sure or no well some bosses have like no elemental weakness now this is this is a for sure for sure you can bring this anywhere setup right because you got reawakening to slow down those weapon cooldowns you got double edged sword you got mana rampage and then you have advanced dagger technique so if you're talking about hey i just want to maximize my damage not only are you getting skill cooldowns allowing you to get more damage off even faster you're getting double edged sword which is boosting your attack you're getting mana rampage which is also boosting your attack and then you're getting advanced daggers that is also boosting your damage while your opponent is getting attacked okay now let's say i want to crit or let's say i'm looking for some survivability then i would personally throw on let's say da -da -da, where is it i like a swiftness i personally am very very big fan of swiftness especially for things like proof of strong where you can't get hit if you get hit like maybe three times you're cooked okay so definitely it's not terrible there i like the speed speed this also increases your cooldown or decreases your dash cooldown and it also makes you faster so it makes you 20 percent faster at the legendary variant so it's not bad some other ones i pretty much like i like demon slayer i know i didn't talk about this at all this video but for gold boss wasn't a bad blessing stone to be running and then where is kasaka's this one damage taken decreases by nine percent increased receive shield effect also by nine percent this depends if you're using the right hunters or right supports and you have something that can give you shield if you do have that you can utilize this to the best of your abilities right but guys this is probably one of my best universal setups if i again survivability i can bring bloodlust that way when i get attacked i'm decreasing my attacker's attack and then when i attack i'm decreasing their defense so this is my best survivability lineup let's take off double-edged sword because that's gonna increase their attack so you could sub out double-edged sword either for sharp perception a conquer of adversity maybe even freaking swift strike hp extraction for a lot of mob clears and even 
Ostler. But if you really need some survivability, go ahead and throw on a camouflage. That way you got three survivability blessing stones and then one super nice one in advanced daggers, depending on that. And then if it's not advanced daggers, go double edge, go weakness, go mana, something like that. But guys, that is my deep dive into blessing stones at each and every tier. Go ahead and leave your thoughts, theories, and comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on post notice, and with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Peace.